different types of energy and how can we obtain it? Let's find out. Before you learn about the types of energy, you have to remember a few things. Number one, a joule is the unit for work or energy. Number two, potential energy is the energy held in an object before it is about to do work. For example, if you crank the handle of a wind-up toy to power it up, the toy is storing energy. Number three, kinetic energy is the energy released by the object resulting in motion. If you let go of the handle of a wind-up toy, the toy will move due to kinetic energy. Now let's get into the types of energy. First, let's talk about mechanical energy. It has to deal with the motion, position, or shape of an object. Mechanical energy can be either potential energy, kinetic energy, or both. A good example of potential energy is a basketball that's not moving because it's storing energy. A car would be a good example of kinetic energy because it's constantly in motion. And a good example of both is this wind-up toy that has kinetic energy and potential energy. There's also an equation to calculate mechanical energy. Mechanical energy equals potential energy times kinetic energy. The potential energy is 20 joules and the kinetic energy is 3 joules. So what's the mechanical energy? Let's solve for this and plug our numbers in. We get mechanical energy equals 20 joules times 3 joules. 20 times 3 is 60 and we bring down the unit which is joules. So the answer is mechanical energy equals 60 joules. Another type of energy is nuclear energy, which is stored in the nucleus of an atom. This energy is released when a nuclear reaction occurs. There are two types of nuclear reactions. One of them is nuclear fission, which is a nuclear reaction that happens when a nucleus splits. Nuclear power plants use nuclear fissions to produce electricity. Another kind of reaction is nuclear fusion, which happens when the nuclei of atoms join together. Nuclear fusion happens in the sun and releases huge amounts of energy. Thermal energy is the total kinetic and potential energy of the particles in an object. In simple terms, it just has to do with the temperature of an object. A warmer substance will have more thermal energy because its particles move faster, and a colder substance will have less thermal energy because its particles move slower. Electrical energy is the energy of electric charges. Electricity travels from one object to another like when you get a shock from a doorknob or when lightning strikes. Even when you use a battery to complete a circuit, electrical energy is being used. Electromagnetic energy is another form of energy which travels in waves through space, like the atmosphere, empty space, and more. Vibrating electric charges cause these waves, and this is actually how we're able to see things in space like the stars and the sun. Examples of electromagnetic energy are microwaves, the sun, walkie-talkies, and even charging your iPad. The last form of energy that has to do with particles and objects is chemical energy, which is potential energy stored in chemical bonds. When the bonds break, energy is released. For example, this apple is storing chemical energy. When you eat it, it travels through your stomach where the acids break it down. When the chemical bonds in the apple break apart, energy is released, which is what you use to get through the day without falling asleep. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And after all, what's not to like about likable science?